Good morning, everyone. Welcome back to my channel. So February, February is all about hearts with Valentine's Day. And Susanna has chosen hearts as part of her prompt. This is her design for the month of February with her calendar. Every month, a different theme building up to a calendar that um, Susanna is hosting and I'm joining in. So this is my inspiration, all about hearts. And I really like these words, follow your heart. So I've been sitting here for about an hour surrounding myself with fabrics and morsels. And I'm like, well, how do I represent this theme of a heart in stitch? Now, as you know, from the beginning of this project, I'm coming along on the journey, but I'm trying to take a different look at each of the prompts so that you get lots of different ideas. Susanna is following this design and I'm looking at each design and going, well, how can I apply it to something else or um, an item or a page stitched into a journal? So every month is going to be slightly different. Now this month, we're doing a page in the journal. Now, back in January, when I was at um, our house at Burham, which I'm in the process of moving to, I have a journal there from the Roxy Creations Journal of Stitchery program that I did. I think it was volume one. I did two journals and I have some spare pages that never got filled. So I went flipping through there and I'm going to do a page for that journal. The journal's not with me. I'll have to wait till I get my hands back on it and um, I can then show you. But I went looking at my Instagram page way back and the page that I want to stitch is sitting next to this guy. He's an owl that um, has soft, neutral tones. Um, I surrounded him with these soft pink flowers and I thought, well, great spot. The next page is blank. This is the size of the fabric. And I, I back in January, I wrote Feb next to Owl. So I know where it's going. I know what it looks like that he needs to, well, I'd like it to blend. So that's really been helpful because <clears throat> I've got to now, I can focus my mind on um, a, a tone, a color is what I'm trying to say where I was just all over the place. And then when I pulled this base piece out, I'm thinking, hang on a minute, it's going next to the owl. So follow your heart. Well, I would say following my heart to me is following stitch. I've done so many different crafts over my time and I, th I really keep coming back to needle and thread. And since starting a channel, I've really believe I've found my groove, my happy place. So if I'm going to do a heart themed February, following my heart, it, it have to be stitch. And I think it's perfect to combine the two. Now, thinking about this guy and his floral treatment, um, I found then this, oh, that's pretty. Gosh, it's like a rabbit hole. You go onto Instagram or Pinterest and then, oh, down it goes. I really like this piece of fabric. Now, I don't know how I'm going to do it, where I'm going to put it, and how a heart will come into it. I do not know. But let's start. Let's just get started. I need a base fabric. So I've got a little bit of old linen here. This is a box of bits that I've been picking at. Oh, look at those doesn't match my color theme no anything oh look at this log cabin here that hasn't found a home has it no um Just bear with me as I do a bit of rummaging and try and get my head around what I'm going to do. Well, there's some tatting. I didn't think I had any tatting. Susanna, I found some tatting. 
I said to Susanna, I'm really low on tatting. If not, I've run out. And look, I found some. I need to keep that out and use it. I love tatting. And it's harder and harder to come by because it's just become one of those elements of slow stitch. A bit of old quilt. Oh, what am I going to use for a background, guys? Um, how am I going to build a background? Do we do it scrappy? Do we do it one piece? Oh my gosh. So I could put so much fabric into the back of the background only to cover it up. Do we make the heart the feature? Do we make, oh gosh, I don't know. Susanna, I should just follow the design. That would be a damn sight easier. Got another container of fabrics here. Anything in here jump out at me? Something will present itself. Well, I've done a bit of work on that recently. But boy, that does match that. Oh, no. Let's just rummage. Let's just... See, that's that fabric from France. It sort of matches that. Do we do our background, a collage of flowers? And then we put a heart in the center. So a bit of France. Have we got something happening now? So I've only got a small space. Hmm. What are we doing for the heart, guys? We don't even have a heart. <laughs> well, we have a heart, but... Let me just grab this box. Oh my gosh, more fabric. In here are some packs that I've bought from different folks. I have a feeling this one was a Susanna. Let's just hang it, Susanna. I love the colours. I've got to remember my owl. These might be too bright. What is that? I think it's getting too bright. Yeah, it's too fresh. It's a beautiful piece of fabric. No, put your nose out of that. No, no. I've got to keep it toned down a little bit. That's a no. That's a no. This is a possibility. Hearts. Let's think about hearts. If I achieve anything in this video, I will be surprised. Um, I need a piece of paper to make a heart. I have, all I have on my desk is paper towel. I don't even have a piece of paper, but this this will do. Let's cut out a heart as a bit of a template to maybe have a think about where... So I've got another container of neutral fabrics here as well. I guess my question is, is the heart the feature or is the background the feature? Corinne, is that the question? It is the question. Where's some scissors? I've got so much blooming fabric everywhere now. So this is what happens. Let's make a heart. How big of a heart? Not that big. Let's just cut something, girl. Just, just cut it. One heart. Nice fat heart. How's that look on that space? Huge. 
but if the heart is the feature, and the background is neutral, how does that fit with my owl? Where's my picture? Oh goodness me, there's stuff popping up everywhere. Follow my heart. Hmm. I sort of keep coming back to this. You know the other thing that caught my eye on this? I think I saw somewhere Paris. See this here, the, the Eiffel Tower? Now I went to Paris last year and it was just the best experience and Susanna was there. So I sort of feel like this is something. Do I make the heart feature this fabric? Will the Eiffel Tower be in it? Yes. Could the heart be a little bit smaller? Because I'm just, I'm chewing into that little flower. Does that matter? If I move that over, I catch that little flower. Let's just draw around. Hang in there with me, guys. I don't know where this is heading, but we've got all month to figure it out. <laughs> Let's just draw around my template and decide whether this is the feature. Or I need to change my heart shape. So what have we got? Oh, that's not bad. That looks good. I've caught the postal stamp. I've got my Eiffel Tower roses. Oh, yeah. Hello. That's it. There's the heart. Let's just cut him out. I'll just make him a fraction bigger there. I think I can sneak. Because I don't know how I'm going to finish the side of the heart. Okay. we. Oh, gosh. We've made a blooming decision. Seriously. What's um, Rachel say? The decisions are the worst. It's a real struggle. It is. It truly is. Now, what are we doing with the heart? And are we going to be as distinct as cutting out the heart? What's this fabric look like when it frays? That's interesting. It does fray. I don't know where I'm heading with this yet, guys, but anyway, maybe. So I really like I really like, see how those little blue flowers are coming off my heart? I don't know if I want to lose them. So, yes, there's a heart there. We can probably get the shape of the heart across the top where this is quite neutral. Let's have a play. But then, oh, I don't know. Hang in there, guys. <laughs> Hang in there, guys. I'm happy with my colour palette, so I can think I can put my little owl away. Use the it into the corner and fray up this edge a little. If that, if that, um, no, I don't know. I'm stalling. I'm stalling to give my brain time to think. But I could 
carry those little blue flowers off the page if I did bring that heart. See, what I'm thinking is I trim this edge back so we've got that shape of the heart, but I keep it square this side. And then I just drift the blue flowers off. Oh, they're gone. Oh, my tummy's rumbling. So we get a bit of a shape of a heart, but it's not a distinctive heart. Let's just rough it up. We can always chop more off. Do we be as obvious as trim into that? I just don't know. I feel like I like that. Is this in or out? I think it's out. It's out. Um, so background wise, what are we doing? Where's this piece of French fabric? I don't seem to have any other bigger pieces around me. They're all scrappy bits. So I think this might have to be my background. Oh, my tummy, for goodness sakes. You know what I feel like for breakfast is bacon and eggs. I haven't had it for ages. It's not the best food, but I do love a good bacon and eggs. So that fits nicely there. Or I take a corner. See, we've got these folds and they're so strongly folded. Oh, my tummy. See, you say bacon and eggs and that's it. I think I can just squeeze that out of there. Let's do it. Got to make a decision. Let's just follow that fold. I hope you cannot hear that stomach. Otherwise, I will have to pause the video and go and deal with it. Just cut it right through, girl. Otherwise, you have these random bits. And sometimes random bits trimmed up a little bit help other ideas come to fruition. There we go and for size, just check it, girl. We'll use the top of that fabric, which has a hem. I'm thinking, make it a little bit bigger. All right, we have a beautiful piece of linen that I got from France. We have a rose cluster at the moment sketched into a heart. I like how that, seam, that edge is stitched down. I'm thinking we're going to use that. And I like how the, the fringe, the frayed calico behind is up there. So we're going to do that. So let's consider that invisible stitched down. A little bit of homework. We've got a bit of a dodgy edge here, but I'm not too worried about it because who knows what will come off that side. This side's nice and flat. So do we, where's the fabric? Do we build out from it with other roses from the fabric? You know, when you start looking at the edge of your fabric, you see little, little morsels of flowers. Sometimes they can be built into it. Where's those blue flowers again? Maybe a, just to sort of blend it all together. See, this guy here is interesting too. I'm just I'm going to fussy cut 
this guy out. And I'm going to fussy cut that one. I'll take that postage stamp. I don't know. Don't know if I'll use them, but I'm just chopping away here. And I'm wondering if I can piece together in some more interesting pieces. Let's just fray this up. I don't know why I'm attracted to these little blue flowers. So if that, say for example, take advantage of that corner or it comes down from the top and the heart comes down and then there's this little guy. Let's fussy cut him in a little bit more. like that's upside down. Cute. I glanced up to it and it just didn't quite look right. Got this guy here. Does he need to be all, yeah, we want the Eiffel Tower. Be nice to have something that is a nod to my friendship with Susanna, the trip to Paris, following my heart, which has become stitching and starting a channel. I think I think this will be a nice piece to have in my book, my journal, which of course is Roxy Journal of Stitchery. Don't mind that. Do I want to cut my heart out sort of like like that does that come down from the top that's better that's better well it's a start I don't know where this is heading with some pins I feel better once I start pinning I start thinking So then what else do we add, guys? I feel like we should do something with some background. When in doubt, backgrounds. That's not backgrounds, that's bright colours. What have we got in this box of... Just grab a mitful. See, things like that can be quite striking. The owl has got those sorts of tones do we do a bit of random layers upon layers of fabric collaging I sort of feel like I need a hero piece of something. Hang on. Hold the phone. I just turned around and had a look at all this bling. No, that looks like a dirty. The owl is very blingy. I'm wondering if there's something in here. I've used that a fair bit. He's got gold. I've used that a fair bit. It's finding a tone that matches. So I don't mind that. See, where's the owl? Go back to the go back to the owl. He doesn't have to sit next. To, I'm gonna sneeze. Doesn't I'm gonna sneeze. Sorry guys. Okay, I'm back. I've got my composure. It's like I opened this up and boom, my nose just went crazy. So there must be some fibers or something that just came poof out, hit my nose and I started sneezing. Just 
I'm not sure. So I'm looking at my owl again. He's like a wash of pinks, but then there's this neutral golds and um, like all those sorts of tones. I'm probably, probably getting ahead of myself here. I probably need to back it up and put that away. <laughs> oh my gosh. I think I'll be able to find something blingy. And I think once the piece is next to the owl, maybe that'll help me a little bit. Just thinking, just thinking. Maybe I want to do a really neutral background first. And I'm thinking I need to cut that heart out. I, I don't. And I think I need another feature, another hero. What's that going to be? Maybe I add another bird. A bird of some description. Remember the fabric I used on Honey Bear's dress? I don't think it's here with me. I think it's up at the other house. I'll just grab it. This, this guy. Honey Bear's here. That fabric there is just gorgeous. And I like the chocolate tones with the pink. I think I need to have another feature, another something. That's what I'm thinking. So maybe I just focus on getting the neutral background down, just something of interest. And then I'll have a look at this fabric when I get back to it. See, I love that skeletal tone. This will fit with the owl as well. See all these clusters here? Mm. Yeah. I think I need more. Yeah, and I think I need to cut this heart out. I'm going to do it. I'm going to, am I? Oh, you know, it's what just stopped me is that rose is going to be lost. Just do it, girl, do it. We're cutting the heart out. And we're going to furry up all the edges and focus on the heart. The background, I just, I can't quite get my head around it yet. I think what I need to do is maybe just focus on this heart, maybe start embellishing it, start building up some interesting little spots within it. Then I'll have a feature. Then I'll get my hands on some bird fabrics. They're all in a container called bird fabrics <laughs> and then maybe I can have a bird somehow coming over it but at least I'll have this heart stitched embellished whatever it may be to go somewhere on here to complement the bird I think that's what I'm going to do my concern is is I go and lay down heaps of these like easy peasy Lots of bits and scraps and interesting elements, which I'm pretty sure I'll do. You know, words and get that whole slow stitch thing happening. In comes the heart, looking gorgeous, but I still feel like I need another piece. And depending on what that is, or if it happens, it's sort of, I need that in my hands. It's really tricky when you've got 
yourself spread across two craft rooms. This here will invisible stitch down. I might even spend a bit of time and camp for stitch it down, but see, that could be a waste. It could end up getting covered. No, I don't think it'll be a waste. I think, I think we'll do running stitch over that whole thing. That'll give me a background right back. And then if it's a case of this becomes quite neutral because everything starts building on top, well then that is, I'm okay with that as well. Now, what I need is something to stabilize this. I wonder if we have a bit of calico. What's this? It's got a bit of a yellow tone about it. It's a scrap. Does it stitch easily? Yep. Probably prefer something a bit thicker. Maybe we put a bit of felt in there as well. I've just grabbed a bit of wadding. Just feels nice under hand. Do we need this as well? Don't mind it. So we're getting a layered thing happening here anyway. This will just give it a little bit of stability because, oops. Oh, that's very unpleasant. Look at that. Nope. Don't like that. That's sheeting and it's... Maybe we can put a little bit of felt under that. Nope, it's not big enough. Just. Okay. I want it to be a padded heart, if you're wondering what the hang the girl's doing. And I like the colour of that there. So if that did show, it wouldn't. wouldn't worry me too much. So we've got a padded heart. Now, I wouldn't mind a piece of calico behind that, to be honest. What have we got? Here's something. Will this do? Surely there's... Oh, yes. All right. We have a nice textured element. Here's my heart. Oh, gosh, Susanna. Bet you're watching this going, come on, girl. Come on, you can do it. Pull it together. We're there. Let's grab some threads. And let's get this little guy. Oh, there's a little bit of thread. Let's get this guy stitched down. Oh, that was exhausting. Oh, this, the pin, something was really hard to push through there. Where's the needle? That's the... Oh, yeah, no, that's good. That's going to feel beautiful. Bandit, Mr. Bandit. Okay. Well, you guessed it, there'll be thread painting in here. Let's just get this little guy. I'll, I'll go around the outside edge. So that's nice and stable, just with a little invisible stitch. And it won't interfere with anything design-wise. There we go. It's like a printed linen fabric. It's not old. I've picked it up in New Zealand, I think. Is there a brand on the salvage? Don't think there is. I had a feeling. Yeah. Oh, look at those flowers. Oh. They're a bit cute, aren't they? The colour palette. Sidetracked. I'm taking them. Oh, 
all right, pin it to the project. It's those little little elements that make pieces look really, really interesting. So I'm just now back to what I'm supposed to be doing, and that is whipping around the outside of that heart. To secure all of those layers together and I will camphor stitch I think or boro stitch running stitch rows and rows and rows of running stitch and I guess if I head off on a different tangent to the owl there are I think three other pages that are empty in that journal they can go somewhere else. But it did help focus my thoughts a little, especially when it's a generic prompt, like a heart. See, we could even do something where we squish up somewhere and we expose something underneath. Oh. Like some lace or something that's peeking out from underneath the heart. Who knows what will come of all this? We have the whole month of February to explore elements that could be added to the heart. I do like the idea of exposing, like peeling it back. I'm just, mm. just had an idea just invisible stitch I'm going to get it down I can always unpick the invisible stitch and do something else I need my protective finger cover or a thimble my finger is getting so tender I seriously need to wear it more often I need you guys, every time you see me do a video, go for the month of February, go, Corinne, where is your thimble? And maybe I will hear your thought, I doubt it, but maybe, <laughs> and go, okay, got the thimble on. Because it's getting a little tender. love the uh, color of the green on this fabric so it didn't lose too much of that flower it doesn't look odd I still have the center of it so it still looks like a rose well we've made a start it was a bit um, bit shaky there for a bit. I might just get myself another piece of cotton because that one hasn't quite made it. So I like even that wadding. Like... That's from my quilting days, that batting. It's a wool. I think it's made in Australia too. It's just beautiful. And I love the soft color that it is. That's Peppers trotting past. Pepper Peach has snuck inside, hasn't she? 
She's a naughty girl. I tell ya. Poor Fudgy, he'll be thinking, I can hear footsteps that aren't mine and I'm the only one inside. That dog must be in here. Ready? Oh, I put Honey Bear on the floor behind me and now Pepper Peach is looking at Honey Bear, who didn't take much notice of how long I'd been filming when I had the sneeze. And it has to be something to do with the dander in all of these fabrics. It's like nearly every video, as soon as I start ratting through all my bits, I get a sneeze. So there must be some fibres or something floating that's um, taken my nose out. So I also want to put the words somewhere too. So that's another thing I need to think about. I quite like stamping them on. Um, I've just got Pepper here now sniffing around. Oh my goodness. Pepper, you need to go outside. Who let you in? Hey, did you sneak in? Did Dad open a door and you snuck in? I might just turn the camera, guys. I don't know if I can do this easily. Can you see? There's Pepper. <laughs> hey, Pepper. You're a naughty girl. You shouldn't be in here. There we go. So, sidetracked. Don't put your paw on me, darling. Off you go. Alrighty. Now. What are we going to do with it? While we're thinking, seed stitch. I think we should do some seed stitch, but I think it needs to be really fine, the thread. Let me grab that. Because if the stitch is too chunky, it's going to overpower the flowers because they're so fine. So maybe we do. There'd be an old, that's an old girl. That's better. It's probably a, a 20 or a 40 in the crocheting world. Colors good. All right, let's get ourselves situated. I will invisible stitch this down for homework. You guys don't need to see that. And I'll definitely do some camphor stitch and I'll probably use the same thread on that as I do this. So there'll be no thick um, stitches, so to speak. So I just need to find myself a good needle. And let's just start with a few little stitches in and around the roses and see what that looks like. A little bit of seed stitch. That just gives my mind time to think. How do we approach these flowers? Do I dig out some ribbons? Yes. Do I dig out some beads? Yes. The seed stitch too will help anchor the center of the heart down a little more so then it shouldn't pucker too much I need a sharper thinner needle that's a bit of friction so that is going to wear my hands out needlessly so I'm just going to <clears throat> That's better, yeah. <coughs> Excuse me. I should probably have a look at our time because I didn't take much notice of that first video. Yeah, 
and I can feel a coughing attack coming on. Oh, goodness me. Okay, I'm back. Oh, my goodness. That's like 10 minutes of my life I'll never get back. I just started sneezing and sneezing and I don't know what it is. I'm wondering if it was actually the the fabric, uh, the paper heart. I picked up the roll of paper, unrolled it, cut out the heart, and a few minutes later I started sneezing. <clears throat> yeah. So a bit of a sneezing attack there. But I did use the time to piece together the two videos that I had already made. And we've got about 15 minutes to the hour left. So that's great. Now I was thinking too, <clears throat> I think this will be a case of lots of elements coming together at the end. Now we have the whole month. So I don't need to solve all my little design element issues at the moment. Let's just stitch for the sake of stitching and see what comes together and other pieces may present themselves. Like I'm just sort of searching around an area of, you know, a meter and a half. I, I need to, I guess, let the piece evolve. And that's the beauty of this slow stitch, just see what comes of it. And I know the heart is the anchoring design element <clears throat> I'm pretty keen on having a second design element to sort of tie it all together. And I like the idea of the bird because that ties it to the owl. The bird is very neutral. It's very chocolate, which will look gorgeous with the pinks. That one little piece of fabric that I picked up, it was like a, um, where is it? Is it gone now? <clears throat> oh gosh, I'm going off on a tangent again. It was this. That there gave me a, a warm, fuzzy feeling. I don't know why. So I'm going to pin. Let's make a little colour palette swatch thing. That. <clears throat> these little pieces. Whether they all get used, who knows. I'm just going to pin that on there. as my sampler. And in the meantime, to allow myself time to think, I'm going to do a heap of seed stitch, itty bitty seed stitch. Where's my protective wear? I bet you're saying, where is it? Because I started sneezing and I ran out of the room. <clears throat> oh, look what's on the floor next to me. Look, we've got a dragonfly. I've been looking for him and he was part of the dragonfly project. He was the first one I sketched that um, was just to show you how I'm going to fussy cut them out and use them potentially in projects. And then I couldn't find him and I just found him. When all that fabric came out, he must have been caught up in it. Let's add him to the pile. Maybe a dragonfly. Who knows? <laughs> oh gosh, you've got to love this stitching. It can be so random, the thoughts you get, and it's great. It's just open up the mind <clears throat> and let it come out. And because it's slow, as in takes a while to do, it's great because it, it gives your time, your mind time to think about these things. Otherwise, it's you know, quick, and then you might miss an opportunity to put more detail into something. <clears throat> so who knows where this piece will go? We've got a couple elements. I feel like I need more elements. We're celebrating. Another thing I wanted to do, because this piece of paper will probably get put away, okay, is right on a piece of fabric. Where's that piece that didn't tear real well? This one. Let's just cut. Cut a bit off. <clears throat> Might as well use it. Is follow 
your heart. So words need to be included, those words. So I can put that away now. The other element here that's caught my eye too is I like these little X's that Susanna's done. So we might, I don't know, what are we doing here? <clears throat> she's got, she's framed this little piece. Maybe we can incorporate a little bit of Susanna's design. I don't know. Follow your heart. Okay, yeah, so I'm going to pop this back in my file. I don't need that from this point. I think I've got enough, you know, bits and bobs happening here. And we'll just keep it all together. So I can now create a little project box for it, or a bag, or a, a tray, or a... Mm, something to put me bits in and uh, away we go this cotton I don't use a lot so that's good oh there's a mozzie did you see that that thing had a saddle on the back of it that was big this is going to give this a beautiful quilted feel Maybe the dragonfly is my feature piece. I so like the bird idea, but oh, I don't know. Who knows? It's funny how it was just there as I come back in the room after having a sneezing attack. And here's that big dragonfly lying right there. Hmm. Even if I stitched him and just added him somewhere in that journal, because, you know, that would be fun. I made some scrappy dragonflies too. And one of those is on the front of the journal where I use lots of scrap bits of fabric and beads and but I think I've used those. Those were right at the beginning of my YouTube career. <laughs> um, <clears throat> I did scrappy, scrappy hearts, scrappy dragonflies, scrappy butterfly, scrappy flower. It was like a little series. And I think I've used all those dragonflies now. And that's what I was wanting to create more fussy cut elements that can be added to future pieces. So hence the dragonfly, little series of stitched dragonfly videos came along. I get a feeling that this, this heart is going to have a lot of embroidery on it that's very fine. See some of those lines there that the artist has done. I would want a really fine thread to stitch it in be beautiful all beads in amongst it oh, gosh here we go again <clears throat> it feels like my sneezing fit is gone must have been that paper towel. It's put a puff of puff of fibers into the air, which I've taken up my nose, and then that's just ensued a heap of sneezing and coughing and choking and gagging and oh gosh, you should have heard it. <clears throat> 
Alrighty. How are we going for time? I get so into it. 10 minutes, that's all right, we've got time. Look at these tiny stitches. Gosh, the girl is just silly, tiny. Could be bigger, but they don't seem to be. I don't know, you seem to have a fingerprint with your embroidery. And I just don't seem to be able to do big seed stitches. I think it's because to, I like them to be there, but not there. <clears throat> So I don't mind that they're tiny, so they're not jumping out at me. I love how it puts a shimmer into the fabric too, especially if you choose a, a crochet cotton that's got a, a bit of a luster to it. That then puts a luster in behind your piece. Just beautiful. I'm glad I cut the heart out. I, I don't know, I was, I was thinking it was going to be a bit of an artistic -y thing by having that side square. But it, I don't know, it was just not quite, quite working for me. Let's end that off, no use struggling with. With that. <clears throat> Okay, now, when I was coughing, gagging, and choking, I was thinking about this background. And remember I said I was going to do it in running stitch? Well, I will. But I thought I might do a bit of a stitch in all directions. What I mean is, let's just take this off. We've got a few minutes spare. <clears throat> one pin's enough, is that I do, where's a ruler, might be the quickest way to show you, <clears throat> start in the middle because that'll then, you know, connect my fabric to the back quickly, I'll do it very light because these pens are proving to be a bit of a troublesome thing in society, so we don't want to go too dark because it could come back is we do our lines, just do a couple, quarter of an inch. <clears throat> I usually don't draw lines for myself, but it's just to show you guys what I'm thinking of doing, is then come through quarter of an inch again and stitched. So I get a quilted cross hatch thing happening. That's what I'm thinking of doing. Now I may end up covering the whole thing up with birds and other bits and pieces, but I think I'll enjoy having a play with uh, cross sections of running stitch. This is getting down to that real slow stitch feel where you're just laying down stitches. So that'll be part of my homework. <clears throat> Could even do them on the diagonal, like there's so much you can do. I'll use the same thread to keep that consistency with color and tone. Where's my needle? Oops, I really should run along because I'm sure we'd be very close to the hour. But let's just get a little bit done, hey? So I haven't invisible stitched this down, which is risky in itself because things can move. But it'll be just a nice gentle rocking of the needle to make my way up. Have I got enough pins? Is it stable? Just slow down girl. 
Look at the banana. <laughs> oh, must have hit a rock when I was pinning something and bent it. This, if I get this stitch through here and through here, it technically could eliminate the need for the invisible stitch. <clears throat> what a beautiful piece of linen. I think this was like a serviette. Oh, that's why we don't like pins. Just rock it along. Sliding through the fabric like butter. There we go. Whoops, 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 whoops. slow down. Oh, come on. It's a struggle, isn't it? <coughs> oh, please don't start again. Just going to ease that fabric and thread. So that is what I'm going to continue on with is just getting some stitches down on a background, which will be neutral. Maybe I could put a red line here or there, a pink line. Oh, here we go. The girls' ideas are popping again. Just stop. Can feel the sneezing attack coming on too oh, for goodness sakes all right guys i'm gonna say goodbye <coughs> yeah i better say goodbye i can feel a tickle in the throat and a tickle on the nose all right have a great day guys look after yourselves bye